Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Monday, a new week, and we're Job chapter 39, verses 13 to 18, which I'll read in a minute, and one of the strangest passages in the whole Bible. But I was thinking, why do we do this? I mean, isn't it strange how we've gone from being obsessed with climate change, to being obsessed with COVID, to being obsessed with war in Ukraine. Now, I'm not saying that none of these things are important, but I'm saying if you're the kind of person who gets up in the morning and the first thing you do is switch on your TV or look at your phone and say, I wonder what's happening with climate change. I mean, I did a thing where I was getting up and looking at when we had the bushfires here, where are the nearest fires? And then what are the numbers with COVID? And what's the situation in Ukraine? By the way, you can hear uh, our trains, they're back for the first time in months to a uh, full-time schedule. Uh, peace and quiet's gone. Um, but with all of that, I wonder if you think, why bother with this? Why, why bother with looking at Job? Why don't you, you know, why, on, on Sunday, why don't all the preachers preach about war or something? Well, let me suggest to you this, that in reality, the government of the world is a puzzle. If you think you understand Ukraine, you know the good guys and the bad guys, I want to ask you to think again. It's just never that simple. Um, the government of this world is complex, and we tend to reduce it to a Facebook soundbite or a Twitter soundbite or a meme or something. And we very we go the there's the good guys, there's the bad guys. And it's just that's just not the way that it is. There's so much complexity in all of this. And I think that's where this passage actually comes in. Now, you say Job with his suffering, how does the ostrich work? How 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 is that part of the answer? And with all that's going on in the world, how is it part of the answer? Well, let me try and explain. So Job 39, verse 13. The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully though they cannot compare with the wings and feathers of the stork. She lays her egg on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or give her a share of good sense. Yet when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. You know, that reminds me a little bit of Eric Little um, saying, God made me fast. Well, what's being said here, and by the way, this is a strange passage as well, because in this whole section, it's the only one which refers to God in the third person and doesn't ask Job a specific question. And that's why the Septuagint version leaves it out, but there's no reason to leave it out. It is there in the Hebrew. Well, what's the passage saying? I think it's telling us that some animals are wild and free like the wild ox. Others, like the ostrich, are just ridiculous, really. God has created an animal whose behavior makes no sense. Um, I do think there are varying degrees. Uh, in, in, intelligence is, implies rational thinking, and I, I wouldn't suggest that, but I do think that there are animals that are more intelligent than others in, in the sense of sheep are as thick as bricks, but pigs are... Um, more intelligent. Well, the ostrich is the daftest of all animals. The largest living bird, weighing up to 300 pounds, reaching a height of seven or eight feet. The only bird with two toes, others have three or four. And the only bird with eyelashes, I didn't know that. The only bird with eyelashes, wow. It has wings, but it can't fly. In Arab thought, its stupidity was absolutely legendary. Literally, that's where you get the expression, hiding your head in the sand. Because what the ostrich does, puts its eggs in the sand, not knowing that it, they could be trampled on, basically placing them in danger. Yet, it could run at 40 miles an hour. And what's the point of this? Well, if God chooses to make a ridiculous bird, then he can do so. Or maybe, as Ash points out, maybe it's in the universe there is a lot of strangeness. And as we saw at the beginning, there is a lot of strangeness of government in the world. Why is Putin behaving the way he is? 
Why do the Germans respond? What about Biden? What about Xi Jinping? What about all these other factors going on? What about within Ukraine itself? Well, we don't know in some things. God may make it plain in the end, and, and God may make it plain in the end why he created the ostrich. But I do like the way that, that Ash sums this up when he says, you know, there was one who looked foolish and who was crucified for that, and that was Jesus. Yet in him is the key to all of this. And even the foolish ostrich points us to Christ as the absolute key. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.